Sugar is one of the most widely used ingredients on Earth, and most of it comes from a single crop, sugarcane. Every year, billions of tons of tall green sugarcane stalks are harvested around the world and transformed into the sparkling white crystals that sweeten our food and drinks. From the humid fields of Brazil and India to the mills of Thailand and Africa, sugarcane is the backbone of the global sugar industry. But how does this towering grass become the refined sugar we use daily? Stay tuned with Smart Farm Insights. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more fascinating documentaries about the journey of food from farm to table. The story begins in tropical and subtropical climates, where sugarcane thrives under abundant sunlight and water. Farmers prepare the soil by plowing deeply and enriching it with organic matter and fertilizers to support this nutrient-hungry crop. Planting is carried out using stem cuttings, sections of cane stalk that contain buds capable of sprouting into new plants. On many modern farms, mechanical planting machines, such as three-line planters, are used to place the cuttings in neat rows, cover them with soil, and even apply fertilizer in one smooth pass. This mechanization ensures uniform spacing, saves labor, and speeds up the work, allowing large fields to be established quickly. As the months pass, the fields grow into dense green forests of cane that stretch as far as the eye can see. The stalks reach three to four meters high, their sweetness increasing as the plants store more sucrose inside. To maximize yields, farmers rely on irrigation canals or modern drip irrigation systems that deliver water directly to the roots. Advanced technologies such as drones, satellite imaging, and soil sensors are increasingly used to track plant growth, detect stress, and guide fertilizer application. These precision methods not only increase productivity, but also reduce waste and help conserve resources. After 10 to 18 months, the sugarcane is ready to harvest. This is one of the most labor-intensive and critical stages of sugar production. Traditionally, many farmers used fire to prepare their fields before cutting. The dry leaves around the stalks were burned away, leaving behind clean, leaf-free cane that was much easier to cut. This pre-harvest burning had clear advantages. It saved time, reduced the effort required by workers, lowered the risk of cuts from sharp cane leaves, and even eliminated dangerous pests and snakes hiding in the dense crop. But burning also had serious drawbacks. The practice released huge amounts of smoke and ash into the air, harming nearby communities and contributing to carbon emissions. Over time, repeated burning also damaged the soil, reducing its organic matter and fertility. For these reasons, many sugar industries around the world have been phasing out burning in favor of green harvesting. In this method, the cane is cut fresh, with the leaves left behind in the field. Those leaves later act as natural mulch, enriching the soil and protecting it from erosion.
On today's largest farms, powerful mechanical harvesters now dominate the harvest season. These machines cut the cane at the base, strip off the leaves mechanically, and chop the stalks into billets ready for transport. They can harvest hundreds of tons per day with remarkable efficiency, ensuring the cane reaches the mill quickly before the sugar content begins to decline. In smaller farms or regions where the terrain is unsuitable for machines, hand harvesting with machetes is still practiced. Skilled workers cut and stack the cane stalks, often from sunrise to sunset, showing the incredible human effort behind the global sugar supply. Once harvested, the journey into sugar production begins almost immediately. Trucks loaded with fresh cane rush to nearby mills, where the stalks are washed and crushed through giant rollers to extract the sweet juice inside. The leftover fibrous material, known as bagasse, is not wasted. It is often burned to generate electricity, providing enough energy to power the mill and sometimes even the surrounding community. The extracted juice is clarified by adding lime and heating, which removes impurities. It is then concentrated through evaporation until it becomes a thick syrup. The syrup is boiled in vacuum pans until sugar crystals form. These crystals are separated from the remaining molasses in high-speed centrifuges. The raw sugar is dried, cooled, and either bagged for shipment or sent to refineries for further purification. In refineries, raw sugar is dissolved again, filtered, and recrystallized into the pure, sparkling white sugar that most consumers recognize. Meanwhile, molasses is sold for animal feed, alcohol production, or even biofuels. Nothing goes to waste in a modern sugar mill. Sugarcane has become more than just a source of sweetness. Every part of the plant has value, from the sugar crystals that go into your kitchen, to the bagasse that generates electricity, and the molasses that fuels other industries. Modern sugar mills are highly efficient, recycling water, reusing byproducts, and meeting strict food safety standards. Still, the industry faces challenges, from water scarcity and fluctuating global prices, to the impacts of climate change. Many producers are adopting sustainable practices such as drip irrigation, green harvesting, and renewable energy use to secure the future of this vital crop. Sugar's journey from tall green fields to sparkling crystals on your table is a story of history, tradition, innovation, and hard work. It takes just hours for freshly cut cane to be turned into sugar. But behind that speed are months of careful cultivation and centuries of innovation in farming and processing. Now that you've seen how sugarcane becomes sugar, what surprises you the most? The three-line planters, the burning tradition, the roaring harvesters, or the sparkling crystals at the mill? Share your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell to catch the next documentary here on Smart Farm Insights.